right, we're here at Steve Morris Engines. Of course, I'm Steve. And uh, this, well, this is Aiden Bailey's engine. You're gonna see uh, Kyle running this on the dyno. It's the unugly version of the uh, Deuce Box engine, formerly the S Box of Doom. And uh, <clears throat> this thing runs really good. All we did is run this NA because uh, Aiden's got all his turbo stuff still in the car and all that kind of crud. And uh, so this one runs good. We just ran an NA on E85 and a uh, pretty good piece. I think or you'll see. Then this, so this is what we call the burial ground engine. And let me explain that. This is one of the, this is the engine that probably helps start it all. Believe it or not, uh, if you go back to that video on the origin story, and I talk about Bailey dropping off the first engine at my 20 foot by 20 foot garage behind my house, it was this engine. This literal engine. <laughs> this engine is the one we went through and built for what we called the burial ground car, which was Tom's first car, which obviously, hence the name burial ground, that thing was seriously cursed. It, it couldn't finish anything without breaking something. But the engine has always hung around. And so, shuffled around with Tom a little bit. Tom ended up with it back. Tom wanted me to go through it, make sure everything is all cool, because I think he's gonna put it in, I think they're gonna put it in something of Bob's car, aren't they? Or, I think Bob's, Bob's gonna do something with it. Uh, so, we're putting this thing on a dyno, uh, sorting it all out, getting it all back and going like it used to be. And uh, this, I, it's, it's pretty cool. Last time I saw this engine was, well, I don't even remember. But this is the first engine uh, that came in on this, you know, 12 years ago when we restarted everything here and uh, got to where we're at right now. Pretty neat deal. So, let's dyno this stuff. Oh crap, hold on, forgot. New hats, new merchandise. Make sure you go to the website. Make sure you like, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, check if you're subscribed because I keep on hearing all the time that people are not subscribed and they thought they were. But these are nice hats. I like them. This is kind of like, this is a combination of date night hat and racetrack hat. Pretty cool. What's good everybody, I'm Kyle Morris, you're here at Steve Morris Engines. I'm on the dyno today with Aiden Bailey's LS for the Deuce Box. Um, normally, obviously, if you guys have seen this car, you know there's a twin turbo drag and drive deal. But I'm just gonna run an NA because we just wanna make sure that this thing is 100% ready to go, it doesn't leak any oil, and we can just hopefully just put it in the car and then have them be able to just run it. So, just running an NA, like I said, but this is a stock lock, stock head engine. It is a 408 stroker. Um, it does have good parts in it. Uh, not our camshaft. It is, I believe it's some kind of Summit Racing camshaft. But it's got a Cali's crank, forged rods, forged pistons, all that kind of good stuff. But really just a very basic build. I've already ran this engine once and it made really good horsepower right off the bat. I was actually kind of surprised. So I'm gonna work on the tune a little bit, tap on the laptop, put a little bit more timing to it, and I think this thing's gonna make some really good horsepower considering what it is. So I'll see you guys out there. Oh, buddy. All right, let's take a look at the numbers here. Um, 608 horsepower, 6,300 RPM, 572 foot-pounds of torque, 5,100 RPM. Um, you can see it comes out here, makes a nice little flat power line, torque curve looks nice and flat. They didn't run it out super hard because 
you know, based on the cam that it is, it's not going to make any power way up there. So there's there's no point in running it like that. So it just doesn't make power. So um, let's take a look at our vital signs here. Boost 0.4 because it's NA. Fuel pressure is looking good. Oil pressure is looking good. Excellent. So pretty decent piece, I think. I mean, considering this is a stock block, stock head, 408 with a turbo cam, low compression. Once you slap some turbos on this thing, I think you're gonna see a lot bigger number than what that is. And hopefully, Aiden with this engine can go sevens. And six summer, I think, is the next race, I believe. So hoping for a seven for him. So next, we're gonna strap Aiden's dad, Tom Bailey's engine on the dyno. Uh, this is actually a, a very, very old engine that he has owned for a very long time out of the burial ground car. Just a blow through carb 540 F2 Pro Charger. Nice deal. Not sure how much horsepower we're gonna make with it, but I'll strap it on and we'll see what we can do. So we have made the first base initial pull, and like I said, this thing is old. This is the original. This is this is old, <laughs> okay? And so the other deal is so I had to jump in here because this thing is carbureted, so it's blow through carburetor, and so there's no keyboard to tap. So Kyle's like, who lost? He just don't know what to do. <laughs> He's not that bad, but got to train him on all the old school technology since there is no keyboard to be tapping on. So I'm working through carburetor right now. We're slowing down the blower because on the first pull, it made uh, uh, 20 pounds of boost, which is just too much boost for this old girl. Uh, this thing still just has a, a multi-layer steel gasket on it and a single needle and seat carburetor. So it's like, oh, wait a minute. This is probably the wrong pulley combination. It's been so long, I don't remember everything about it. Um, what we had on it for pulley combination. And then I found a, an extra pulley that he had sitting in a box for it. And I go, ah, oh, yeah, I remember. So we're putting that pulley on, different belt, and I'm going through the carburetor because I also don't remember what all was going on with the carburetor. I mean, you're talking about something that's literally 12 years ago. And so got to resort the whole deal out. So we're working on jetting, fuel, and then uh, taming the boost down. And then uh, showing Kyle how all this all works with the uh, carburetor, boost reference, power valve, stuff like that. Tech for the day. Caution, you will learn something here. If you are a blow through carburetor guy, I try to tell people this all the time, and we proved it out. Fuel pump. Now, this is just the dyno cell, okay? 
your bypass style regulator. Always, 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 without doubt, without any excuse, the return needs to be in a, uh, in a car. When you have a hose on here, the return to your regulator has to be bigger than the inlet line. Okay, that doesn't mean you just go make a smaller inlet line. So what uh, Kyle had set up here, because Kyle didn't know, was he had a dash 10 line coming up to the regulator and had a dash 8 return line, just a dash 8. That was just a little nipple right here, all right? And what it does is the fuel pump pumps so much fuel that the regulator can't get down. The minimum amount of fuel pressure we could get was 10 PSI. Well, 10 PSI on this carburetor flowed, uh, overflowed the needle and seat. Okay? No matter what, we back the screw all the way out. It still made 10 pounds. And I go, hey dude, put a, we need to get off the 8 and we need to put it over here on this 10 line to make it the same size as the plunger in that uh, regulator. So we put the 10 line on, or I'm sorry, put a 10 return on it. All of a sudden we could get down to five PSI. Then I go, then he said, well, let's put a small line on it. So we put a smaller line on, put a dash six line on up to here. And it still made, uh, it's, we went back the other way and it still made 10 pounds. So regardless of what, what line was on here, it has to have a really large, um, has to have a really large return line. So always blow through carburetor guys, bypass style, boost reference regulator, your return line needs to be as big as possible. If you can put a dash 12 return line on it, that's better yet. Because what will happen is, if we could have gotten, gotten the fuel pressure set to seven PSI, all of a sudden what's going on is, it's a bogus reading because pressure is backing up inside the regulator and giving you a, a false reading. Here, it was at 10 PSI, we couldn't get it any lower, so it was just proving out what is going on. So, what happens is, you'd set your fuel pressure, if you could get it low enough, but going down track, when it took all the fuel, it actually went to its correct fuel pressure, what it really was, not being all backed up inside there, all of a sudden you burn up an engine because your fuel pressure is too low and it runs out of fuel. Tech note for any of the blow through carburetor guys. I've done all this stuff for the last 20 years, and you just kind of forget about, uh, forget telling people about this stuff because people go to EFI right away. But if you're a blow through carburetor guy, you have a great big fuel pump because you want to make a bunch of horsepower, 12, 1300 horsepower, whatever, make sure your return line is bigger than your feed line. Tech tip for the day. So one of the things I'm doing here is I'm checking my flow height. You check flow height on a blow through carburetor or any kind of carburetor, usually by, uh, you can use the sight level, obviously when it's running, but uh, you can't use a sight level when it's running on a blow through because the bowl is pressurized. If you take the screw out while it's running, it blows fuel all over you. You can do it with an electric pump with the engine off, you can do that. But in general, you're gonna have 312 thousandths of 516 drill bit or 516 anything that goes underneath here on the floats. That's a good general level. Um, you can get a little more specific. You can play around or jerk around with it all you want. But in general, that's a good number. They're just a tick low right now. And I'm looking at what jetting was in this carburetor and verifying that the power valves are working. This has got a stock power valve in it. It's not a boost reference power valve. The power valves are still good. So um, uh, typically, I don't want to make any more than, we don't want to make more than 1200 horsepower with a single needle and seat carburetor. Usually I like to be in that. 1,000 to 1150 area right around there. So that's why we're slowing the blower down because we're gonna make too much horsepower exceeding what the carburetor was capable of and all that good stuff. So um, I'm, we verified this. It's all working, I'm gonna adjust the flow height. We're gonna put it all back together and uh, put the pulley on it. We'll make a pull, I'll show you that.
All right, so you just saw that, that pull, and uh, it's still making too much horsepower. So we're going to, uh, we'll look at the numbers here, and you can see um, it doesn't have, this is like, I mean, this is really old school technology here. So, I mean, it's it has a deviation of one point. So it starts out at 11.8 and uh, ends at 12.9. So I'm going to throw just a little bit of main jet at it because I can live with it being a little rich down here. So, I mean, there's some compromises that we make. This carburetor is not fully tunable and it doesn't really need to be. But, like I said before, it's making a little too much horsepower. It was making 20 pounds boost with a 73 pull tooth pulley. <clears throat> now it's making 15 pounds of boost at 7,000 RPM. So that's cool. That's all good. 21 pounds of fuel pressure, 70 pounds of oil pressure. That's all fine. And I'll get rid of this and just get a little bit richer up there, which will probably take a little bit of horsepower out of it. And then obviously it's making 1,282, so we need to tame that down some. I'd like to get that out. So it's probably, uh, because we can run this on uh, pump gas, I, I have C16 in it right now, so it really doesn't matter, but uh, this will be a, a pump gas engine too. So I think we'll, um, I think we'll actually probably change it over to pump gas and I'll put pump gas timing in it. And so we need to get this thing down in that 1150 range. That's really pretty much as m most I like to see. Um, I like to see that kind of horsepower range. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go in there and do a little, little bit of a jet change in it. Uh, sacrifice and it'll be a little rich there at peak torque area which is fine that's a good safe spot for it and we'll get this thing down into like uh, probably in the 28 26 degrees at total timing area which will uh, uh, and I think we'll 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 just go ahead and swap it over to to a uh, pump gas right now uh, we'd start up on c16 because it's always just easier to start on c16 and then you can go backwards from there so we don't accidentally hurt something by uh, not having enough octane and in something so now we know where the boost levels at it's 15 everything's all good there get this thing down that 1100 plus range So that made, oops, sorry. go ahead, touch the button. I just wanted to see what it made the last run. Oh yeah, so that's, yeah, previous run to this run. So this is, this is previous run. This is after we put a little bit of uh, jet in the primary and uh, timing retard. So we're closer, and we'll rev this up just a little bit higher here in a minute. But to go to the AFR, And so now we've got it. So it's at 1130 or you know 1140s right there, and then 12 finishes it off at 1262 right there at the very end. Probably discount that very last number. That's why we're going to rev this up just a little bit more. Rev it up to 7500. Make sure we're not going to end up in any issues or any problems right there. I'd like it to, to flatten out. I might be able to do a uh, I might be able to do a high speed air bleed change, but I uh, got to look at it and see if they're replaceable or not. Um, and I don't mind having a bunch of fuel down here in this low area. It just keeps things safe anyways. And um, typically up here is not a big deal. It's still, you know, 15 pounds of boost, so we're pretty good there. Uh, yep, everything looks pretty darn good. Pretty happy with all that. So I think we're going to go in there and add a little more fuel to the secondary side. So it's still making a little more horsepower than I want, but as long as everything looks good... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, we could probably take a little more timing out of it, but at some point in time, it it doesn't. It's not changing the amount of fuel that it gets. So the carburetor is still a limiting part, and uh, we can bake a little less horsepower. But it's still. Uh, let's see how would I put that? It's still. 
still can't flow fuel but it's not requiring fuel to make the horsepower because we don't have enough or as much timing in it so um, think about that it's like circular logic going on uh, anyways I think we'll uh, do that let's put a little more fuel in the back and then we'll uh, rev this up a little bit more and I think we're gonna be done okay so uh, we just put more fuel in the rear and then it turns out that way back when I had put more fuel on one of the corners probably on the 7.5 was it on 7.5 so he kind of staggered jets. So I had, uh, what was it? Six? I had six sizes jet stagger from this 7.5 corner to the six, I'm sorry, 7.5 corner. 6.8 corner is was lean, so I put more fuel there. 7.5 corner was rich. So it usually has to do with how the air gets directed, pulls fuel and whatnot. So we just followed that same stagger. Uh, it's square in the front, so we followed the same stagger and just went up a couple sizes and then we'll rev it up here and see what it does. Let's do a previous show previous run. So this was this was the previous run. I don't know. So let's see. It actually picked up a little bit of power down here and kind of leveled off up there. So let's see what our stuff looks like. Yeah, it just starts to get a little bit lean up there. And at 69, 12.47. So it did come down about 2.2. Stayed the same up here. So I think we'll we'll end up having one more in this thing, Kyle. Where'd you go? I think we'll end up having one more in this thing and we'll... Uh, let's pull all the plugs and just look at everything to see what it looks like. And then we'll stagger up these jets maybe just a little bit more. And I'd like... I just want to get this so it's like 12.5 or so at 70 you know, 7,500 ish. So, uh, we're gonna try getting there. The horsepower is about right. So, you know, it's making about 50 horsepower more than I normally like to do, but it is on that whole edge. So if we can fix it with the jetting, then obviously the needling seat is okay. Uh, we might also, uh, we'll probably raise the oil, uh, fuel pressure, like uh, maybe one pound. Let's see what it's at right now. Enough so that it's not blowing the needle and seat off, but if it gives us a little more fuel pressure, that would also help us out. And actually, it might just do that. Wait for it to communicate. There you go. Oh, the fuel pressure is way low, Kyle. That's not really way low. It was five before. It's four point nine. Well, I weren't. I thought we were at seven. No, it was always five. Okay, this is a father-son, father-son miscommunication. <laughs> It needs to be seven. I thought it was seven. I thought you no, were at seven. Fine. We'll make it seven. We'll make it seven. Yeah, see? <laughs> okay, so we just uh, raised the fuel pressure up to seven, where I thought it was. So we'll see exactly what it does. It'll be interesting to see exactly what, what it does do. Eleven fifty or eleven forty six, uh, seventy one hundred RPM leaves over a little bit up there. 
911 that all looks good that was a long a uh, longer sweep you saw right there so uh, it's got some oil on the exhaust tubes it's a long story it's got some oil on exhaust tubes so it's just burning that off all right so we're looking good right there i don't mind it just laying over a little bit out there let's see what numbers look like here dang interestingly enough it did not do anything so the <clears throat> added uh added fuel pressure did not change our fuel curve any and uh so it might actually be laying down up there just a little bit because it's a little lean so we're gonna need to still throw we're just gonna have to throw a little bit of jet at it kyle okay out up here let's see where we're at well it got a little bit better so 11 3 but still gets up there right at the end gets up there in 13 one and that that just gets to be the problem up there hmm. <laughs> the thing is I really want to slow it down even more kind of boost where we at here actually makes 17 pounds of boost up there at, at 74 7500 uh, see that's a 60 tooth bottom and 56 tooth upper and I think what we really ought to do is have a 60 tooth 60 tooth a 62 62. We have to order one because we don't have any. I know we don't have one here. Yeah. All right. Hmm. Well, I think all things said and done, I'm happy with where it's at. The plugs look really good even at that. I think we just need to lower the boost a little bit. And uh, the beauty of carburetors is we can lower the boost and it pretty much takes the same, doesn't change the fuel curve very minimally, if any, because what it does is it moves less air so it takes less fuel it's automatic it's an amazing thing um so anyways i think we're actually pretty pretty well done with this thing uh pretty neat to see it back here after all of these years and um get my head re-wrapped around it what it was and uh what you know that that was 12 years ago first one 13 years ago now <clears throat> or no no 12 and a half whatever anyways the uh uh, the first engine, Tom Bailey dropped that thing off, and that's where we started this whole new deal, all going, and uh, so it's kind of neat seeing that whole thing. Anyways, uh, I think we're gonna be done with this because I'm not gonna waste your time getting a pulley, put a pulley on it. Um, we'll tune that little bit out at the track because uh, whatever we put this in will have some form of a data logger in it, and I know taking that little bit of boost out of it, uh, even if we went. Even if we went 58 tooth, it might just actually go 58 tooth. Just get a little bit of boost out of it, and uh, it'll tune that the carburetor up and make it pretty nice and happy right through there. So anyways, I am Steve Morris. That is Kyle Morris. Learning carburetors. The simpleness of carbs. No keys to tap. That's mm -hmm. it. Have a great day.